guys, Youngblood with you for the 20th episode of The Inbox, and we're going to go ahead and start off with a question from Leo Anderberg asking me if I can make a video of the Idris. Uh, the short answer is yes, but I'm going to wait until that thing becomes hanger ready so we can actually uh, yeah, take advantage of some of the people that I know that have them that are going to let me take a look around. Um, if we get some really relevant information about it or more design on it, I'm happy to do that, but <clears throat> excuse me, uh, until we actually have that, it's just not worth doing right now because they're going through so much development on the ship. Uh, Jim Akid says, Hi Youngblood, any idea which ship would suit smuggling? Uh, I actually just loaded, uh, by the time this video goes up, last week a video on picking the right smuggling ship. So check that out and it should hopefully answer your question. Um, but like I mentioned in that video, the best smuggling ship is the one you don't get caught smuggling in. And there's a couple different ways you can do that, so watch that video and it should hopefully answer your question. Uh, Nizatron says, Hey Youngblood, before I ask my question, just want to say I love your work. Keep it up. Thank you. Uh, has there been any mention of UEC loans in the Persistent Universe? I like the idea of being able to borrow UEC from the UEE, any other players of your organization mates, etc. Uh, from the lender's perspective as a player, there's also the idea of loaning UEC and charging interest. Um, basically wants to know what I think about that actually happening, uh, maybe putting a bounty on people if they don't pay up. I think there is going to be loans amongst players. I think you're going to have credit transfers being a thing. And then you can kind of do things in game. Like you can probably, I don't know if it's going to be facilitated within the game per se. Um, but, you know, we have a gray market today where people are selling ships. There's probably also going to be almost like a uh, loan shark type of, uh, you know, a role that people play and actually role play that as well. So I think it's going to happen. And you might be able to take out small loans from banks. Um, but ultimately, I don't think it's going to be something that's real prevalent because if somebody's a really good criminal, there's not going to really be anything that can stop um, players from taking a loan from the UEC, uh, from the UEE and then running off with that money and then becoming wanted and then having that money there. So they may do it, but I would guess it would be in very small amounts. Um, but amongst players, I think you could absolutely do that. Uh, Brent Chesson says, thanks for another great video. You are welcome. Uh, just wondering what your impressions uh, about all the new ships having very dark interiors with just a little bit of color accents. Do you think it's too dark where, um, where you when you're in the deep black? Um, so yeah, I, I think the design of the ships being dark makes sense if you have control over the lights on your ships. So let's say we're in a ship in the hangar and it's very dark in there. You know, the constellation can be pretty dark inside. Um, you know, I think that's fine when you're just in normal transit, but having the ability to flip on different lights is probably something that I think would be relevant. I think that's something that's going to be even more important once we start talking about even bigger ships, you know, running around like a reclaimer or running around the inside of a javelin or something like that. You're going to want more lights. The Starfarer, I think, is a pretty good example. I think it's relatively lit. It could be a little bit brighter, but it depends on where you're at in the ship. Um, but I think it's all about player control, and hopefully that's a level of customization that we get at some point. Uh, Sam Kaufman says, what org do you think had the best pi combat pilots? Uh, my org, of course. <laughs> um, honestly, I don't know. There's so many players in so many different organizations. I haven't really noticed a singular trend in who's the best. Um, I think we'll probably get better ideas once we have, um, you know, different leaderboards. We can clear up who's like how they're actually being uh, run, uh, and then once we actually get into the persistent universe, people are going to start having reputations, and those reputations are probably going to include things like combat proficiency. So I think we'll get a better idea then. But right now, I have no idea who has the best combat pilots. Probably one of the biggest organizations out there because statistically, they probably have the best shot at having the best pilots. Uh, Delta7090 says, just wondering if uh, if we join your PXP org, are we going to have to use that green color scheme? Uh, no. <laughs> Short answer is no. Uh, Grant PSP uh, says, hey, Youngblood, I have an M50 Saber Vanguard, Harbinger Retaliator, Reliant Freelancer Miss, and really considering melting my M50 and upgrading to the Reliant and upgrading the Reliant to an LTI Starfarer Gemini. I realize that this question is probably going to be late in answering it since it's not for sale right now, but anyways, um, I'm typically moody when it comes to uh, picking combat or trading, and I have an organization of friends with the intention of doing both. Uh, Miscanagus designs are my favorite um, manufacturers, and I love the fact that the Gemini will be a missed ship with Aegis badges. Do you think having a star G would provide a nice backbone for my small org of eight people? What are your thoughts on pledging for ships, which in turn eliminates the gameplay of earning them? Okay, so long question. Um, with this, 
The M50 is a good ship, um, but when you start talking about what it's good at, you're it's good as a racer and it's good as kind of a pest ship. Um, when I look at your ships that you currently have, the Sabre is not a whole lot slower and has a whole lot more firepower. So unless racing is something you have a lot of interest in, the Sabre kind of crosses over into what the M50 does as its alternative career path. So I think you're covered there, so melting the M50 is not necessarily a bad idea. The Starfarer Gemini is a really, really nice ship. Now you got to keep in mind, once it becomes released again, it's going to be really expensive. You know, it's not going to be, um, you know, $245. The prices increase significantly on it. Um, but the Gemini in general is a really good ship, and I think it has some flexibility to it, especially for a smaller organization to take on different tasks. Um, so I think that's kind of my that's kind of my stance on that. As far as um, earning ships versus when it comes in game, it really just depends on your personal preference and where you're at with it. I I have quite a few ships. Um, I don't have a ton, but I've got the um, I've got about seven ships, basically seven or eight ships. And the reason I've done that is because I know I'm never going to have the same amount of time to play as someone who spends you know eight hours a day playing. And God love you guys who are going to be able to do that because I'm really jealous of you. Um, but for someone like myself and a lot of people out there, being able to purchase ships now that allows you to have enjoyment and play different aspects of the game once it releases, not only is helping to develop the game, but is helping you to get enjoyment from day one. And I think there's still going to be a lot of things that you have to earn, like you're going to have to spend credits on upgrading those ships, on repairing those ships. There are other ships in the game that I don't own that I would like to that I would like to own. So I think it just really depends on your stance um, and how deep you want to get into the game. Uh, Akron says, hey, why do you think there's going to be something like the editor or virtual arsenal in Arma 3 where you can try everything or an option to host a private editable universe? I want to try out this ship or test this ship before buying it, practice it, etc. Um, yes, there's going to be private hosted server so you know and some people are going to do that and make like star wars mods or firefly mods um some people are just going to want a standalone server for them and their friends but we know there's going to be private things like that so yes that is technically going to be there the other side of that is is that there's always going to be arena commander you know arena commander was really important in getting the game developed but it's not going away it's always going to be a part of this game so you could always rent ships with wreck from playing arena commander and then you try them there to decide if you like them before actually purchasing them in the Persistent Universe. And for the last question, Achilles Philippides, Philippides, sorry about that, question for the next answers video. Um, it's a five part question, or four part question. What do you consider to be a valid ship stable lineup for docking in an Endeavor hangar module? Um, I think it depends on what the purpose of your Endeavor is. You know, if you're talking about a, you know, a Hope class, then you're going to want a Cutlass Red, maybe two of them. Um, you know, you might want a Cutlass Red and, you know, a Runabout or something like that. Um, second question is uh, add the same question again by assuming the Cutlass Red will not be needed as one of the ships you have docked. Um, if you're talking about something like the Super Collider version, um, you know, you may want to start bringing materials on board the ship. Um, the Cutlass Red and the Miss Prospector are very similar in size, so potentially you could bring ore and stuff to then be used in the Super Collider. Um, you know, maybe you want a 315P along with something like a Avenger Titan, so you can then go out, explore, find what you want, um, you know, then use the Titan to pick it up, haul it in, and bring it in. Um, or maybe you're using a Cutlass Black since it carries even more cargo. Um, you know, I, I could see situations where some of like the Reliant Sin, for example, could be a good option. There's a whole lot you could do with it, but it really depends on what the configuration of your endeavor is. Uh, third part of the question is, considering the size of the Cartuol, which is comparable to both the Merlin and Archimedes, would that make it the best small fighter which overshadows any of the other options? Um, the Cartuol is a lot bigger than either of those ships, like significantly bigger. If you see it in the hangar, it's closer to a larger fighter like a... Uh, you know, like a Super Hornet or something like that. It's a much bigger ship. And uh, past that, it's a fully functioning ship, meaning you also get the quantum drive and the jump engines. 
the Merlin and Archimedes are snubnose that really rely on the ability to dock with a uh, constellation series or can be used standalone in like a race. Um, but they're not even in the same category, to be completely honest with you. So the Cartuol is a ship that's much more complete than both of those. So yes, it does overshadow them. Yes, they can all be considered small fighters, but they serve much different purposes. And the fourth part of your question, if given the option based, or would you suggest replacing my Merlin Archimedes with a Cartuol in a carrier-based ship such as a Constellation? Again, the Cartuol isn't going to dock with the Constellation. So you, the only two options that can actually dock with the Connie are going to be the Merlin and the Archimedes. Now picking between those, it depends on what you actually want to do. The Merlin is more of a fighter. The Archimedes is more of a luxury racer. Um, if you go with the Archimedes, you're sacrificing that nose gun, the Gatling up front, to be able to get the fuel intake on it. So it's a pretty big trade-off if you decide to go that route. But those are your only two options where it stands today. So that's it for this episode. Uh, stay tuned for a whole lot more coming. Have yourselves a wonderful day, and I'll catch you guys later. Take care.